Good morning, everyone. May I invite all of you to have a close look at this picture and tell me what you think about it. What is common amongst all these people? They're all successful people, aren't they? I'm sure you'll agree. May not be rich, but successful they sure are. Let's have a show of hands. How many of us in this auditorium want to be successful? Wow. That's a house full. I think applaud yourself. And how many of us know what success means? Not very many. That's not surprising though. Actually, success is a very funny word. It means different things to different people. Usually, what we consider success is associated with wealth, money. But when you ask the really rich people, they will tell you money is not everything. Money can't buy you happiness. Then what is success? Success is nothing but achievement of your objective, whatever you set for yourself. Let's take an example. You're preparing for an exam. You have a grade point in mind. And you achieve that. Is that not success? You want a dream job, and you get an offer letter, and you accept it, and you celebrate success without even going to the job even for one day. Is that not success? When a marathon runner sets a time for a marathon and accomplishes it within that time, is that not success? So success definition is very internal, as opposed to what we generally feel and we measure it with someone else's yardstick. What do you think is success? Does success lead to happiness? Or does it lead to wealth? Usually, the higher the achievement of the goal, the more complex the goal, more the effort is required to achieve that. Of course, better planning, better execution, and hence, the better sense of achievement, or may I say, better happiness. So is success a measure of happiness? I think it is. So where can we draw lessons from happiness to achieve success or to get happiness? Who are the happiest people in the world? Take a guess. It's the kids, aren't they? Children are usually happy. In fact, we often say that childhood days were the happiest that we had. And why is it that so? Because children have very small goals. And they put in all that they have, all the energy, every ounce of it, into achievement of that goal for that particular moment in time. And very soon, it's not surprising that they achieve it. And they're happy. Once that is done, they move over to the next goal, and the next, and perpetually, they are happy. The learning from kids is that success is driven by your objective. More powerful the desire, better the chances of success. And also, the learning from children is that we, they live in the moment. So can we also live in the moment, and success and happiness will follow? Let me take you back about two decades ago and narrate a story. There was a young couple in Delhi who was blessed with a son. Obviously, they were related, extremely happy. The entire family was happy. You would say, what's new? Doesn't it happen every day? Of course, it does. And in India, it happens more often than anywhere else in the world except China. Unfortunately, this happiness was short-lived because on the third day before discharge from the hospital, the doctors told this couple that their son was suffering from a rare congenital heart disease which required urgent intervention. 
Now this came as a big blow to the family and needless to say the parents as well. They didn't know what it meant, what was the correct remedial action, whether or not it will succeed. And this is the year 1997 when open source information was scant, internet and the mobile phones were just being introduced in India. Two days later, the doctors did an intermediate procedure on the child, the young infant, all of five years old, to stabilize his condition. But they delayed the corrective surgery to a later date, which basically meant that that infant would live life with a host of complications as long as he lived. The proper remedial action for that condition was open heart surgery to be done within 10 to 12 days. We know that in hindsight now, but at that time, neither the parents nor the family knew about it. But whatever, the father decided to have a second opinion. The son was in ICU, in critical care, on life support monitoring. And like I said, without much information, he ran, ran helter and skelter for a second opinion, including getting in touch with his brother who was in USA. Not much came by way in Delhi, but a faint ray of hope when two cardiac surgeons in California, Children's Hospital, said not to delay any further, but get the child over to USA in the fastest possible time, definitely before the cutoff of 10 to 12 days, because otherwise the condition would get more complicated. Faced with this predicament, the family and the couple had no choice, but only one thing in their mind, that they had to take their ailing son to USA in the fastest possible time and definitely three days from then. It takes 24 hours from Delhi to USA. Primarily it meant 48 hours to set on that plane. The son is in ICU, the mother is in ICU taking care of the kid. And here the father runs to the passport office to get a new passport made. Because at that time in April 1997, the US embassy rules had changed. They wanted a passport for every individual, regardless of when the person was born. Earlier it used to be added on to the mother's passport. With a blank form in hand, the father rushed to the passport office. And that time he did not have his own passport. He does not have his wife's passport. He does not have a photo of the child and neither did he have a name in mind to christen the child. What would he write on that? To top it, once he reached the passport office, the gates had closed for the day. And the officers and the guards told him, come tomorrow, we'll be done. In that grave situation, almost on the verge of breakdown, he said, there may not be a tomorrow for my kid. For him, the no was not an answer. He pleaded, persuaded, did his best. And finally, the regional passport officer and others relented. They let him in. And sure enough, by evening, they delivered the passport on emergency grounds. The next hurdle to get a US visa, and this was a Friday. Over the evening and the night, he assimilated all the documents which were required, which would possibly required for the visa and landed up well before the appointed time. No was not an option. It just had to be done. He did what he could and submitted his papers and then waited. Once again, fortunately, the visa was accorded on emergency medical grounds. And there were a host of issues like this, getting clearance from the hospital, medical clearance to fly, etc., etc. But to cut the story short, by that next day, with all things in hand, the couple 
with their infant ailing son, embarked on that long passage to USA, not really knowing what would be the outcome, whether or not the kid would survive the journey as well. But prayers in their mind and hope in their eyes, they did land up in USA for that surgery. In his book, The Alchemist, Paulo Coelho says, when you want something, the entire universe conspires in helping you achieve it. That is so story, uh, that is so true in this story as well. Despite the trying circumstances, the critical condition of their son, and a race against time. There were so many people, so many things, working in unison to see that the little kid reached USA in time. Of course, the parents were relentless, but divine presence was with the family at every step of the way. Let me share with you three secrets, three P's of success. Passion, planning, and perseverance. Passion is the undying desire we spoke about when no is not an answer. You have to be consumed by it. Passion answers the why. Planning is the detail for execution. This requires effort. This requires immense thought. And the last P is perseverance. Perseverance is the relentless action on the plan. Never give up. Never give in. Especially in adversity. Remember, each one of you is a successful person. All you have to do is to see yourself that way. If you are consumed by the goal and the desire to achieve, the mind will work tirelessly to achieve it. The higher the desire, the lower the degree of difficulty, and vice versa. I followed this remarkable story, not because I wanted to narrate it to you today, but I followed it because I lived it from the first day onwards. That young lady in the picture is my wife. Her prayers and gratitude never cease even till date because they are part of every breath she takes. And that little bundle of joy is our son who was God's blessing bestowed upon us in a very unique way. I'm happy to share with you that next month, he graduates from Miami University in USA, exactly 22 years from the first time he set stage <laughs> for his surgery. When your heart and soul is connected with your goal, success is destined to be yours. Thank you.